So what they're asking us to do for this problem, actually I wrote, wrote, wrote my book, um, I believe in this problem they're asking us to graph it. So, so far, Dylan, what we've practiced is we've been practicing writing the equation, writing the equation, writing the equation, writing the equation. Now I'm giving you an equation and I'm asking you to graph it. The problem is this doesn't look like the equations we've been dealing with, right? So if you guys remember when we had parabolas and we had circles, um, if we remember both of our forms, we need to write it into that format when we had those squares, right? When we have our perfect squares, our binomial squares, right? So what I need to do is I need to rewrite that. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this so my x's and my y's are next to each other. So I have 3x squared minus 6x plus y squared minus 8y, and I'm going to add the 5 to the other side. Because right, it always equals 1, right? It doesn't equal 0, it equals 1. So we know there at least has to be a number over there to get this to 1. All right. Now the next step is I need to get to complete, I need to get a binomial squared. So the process for getting binomial squared is completing, completing the square, right? So we're going to do it twice. We're going to do it for these two. We're going to do it for these two. All right. So we look at this one and we say, all right, I can't complete the square until I factor out the 3, right? Now, can I complete the square? Yes. Take my b, which is negative 6, divided by 2, and square it. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3, three squared is 9. So I have 3 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. Here, I take my negative my b, which is negative 8, divided by 2, square it. Negative 8 divided by 2 is 4. Negative 4, negative 4 squared is 16. So we got to that point, right? Does everybody follow me? Yes? Because remember, I had to fact. Oh, you're right. Jeez. Thanks, Deponica. Good work. Just want to make sure. So you fact out a 3, x squared minus 2x, right? Yes. So therefore, it's going to be 3 times x squared minus 2x plus one. Now does that make sense? Better sense, right? Thank you very much. OK, so now we need to make sure though we added. So now when we completed the square, you guys got to remember, when you complete the square, you're actually adding a term, right? We're taking our number, dividing it by 2, squaring it, and then we're adding it. So we got to make sure if we have an equation, if we add something to the left, we got to make sure we add it to the right. So we multiply by 1. But that 1 is being multiplied by 3. So we got to make sure we do that on the other side. Then we have a 16 we added. So we got to add the 16 as well. All right? We got it. OK. So now, remember, the whole reason why we complete the square is to create a perfect square trinomial. Why do we like perfect square trinomials? We like perfect square trinomials because we can factor them down to binomial squares. So if I factor this, I get 3 times x minus 1 squared plus this factored is going to be y minus 4 squared equals 5 plus 3 is 8 plus 16 is 24. All right. Now we still have a little bit of an issue. Um, look at this because remember our equation for our standard form of our graph um, looks like this x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. And then it's either a squared or it's either b squared equals 1, right? It's one or the other. So we don't have any numbers being multiplied as of right now times our coefficient. So to figure this out, to figure out our a and our b, I need to get rid of this 3. Or actually, I'm sorry, anything. I need at least this to equal 1, right? This needs to equal 1. So to do that, what I need to do now is divide by 24. So I'm going to have to make sure I divide everything by 24. Okay. Therefore, I get now x minus 1 squared over, this reduces down to 1 8, plus y minus 4 squared over 24 now equals 1. So now you guys can see what is the larger of my two denominators, 24 or 8? What's the larger number? 24. So you guys can see that my a squared is going to be under my y 
and my b squared is under b and my x, which now tells you if your a squared, which is your largest term, is under the y, you're now going to have a vertical, right? Um, Yes. Negative three eight. I just wanted to. <coughs> so wait, where did you get? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Never mind. Okay. Got it. I told you it was hard. So now we need to go and figure out what everything we know. So now we can determine our center. Our center's at where? 1 comma 4, right? So now we know a squared is going to equal 8. b squared equals 24. And remember, to find our c squared, we know that a squared plus, oh, I'm sorry, a squared equals b squared plus c squared. So a squared equals b squared, which is 24, plus, I'm sorry, yeah. Yes. Why is it that B squared? Remember the formula is a B squared over A squared. Oh, I'm sorry, I re you're right. I re okay, thank you. A squared is 24, right? B squared is 8. Thank you, I messed that up. Oh my gosh. So you have 24, and that is your 8, O plus your C squared. Yes? Then we subtract 8. Sixteen equals c squared. Take the square root. Take the square root. C equals four. Okay. So a squared. This is going to be a decimal, right? If we try to simplify that, right? So a equals the square root of twenty-four. B equals the square root of eight. But c equals four. So at least we know one even number that we'll be able to figure it out. So we're going to have to approximate for a and b as we graph it. But we'll go to work this. Everybody has this work done? This right here? Yeah. OK, well, uh, let me go and erase the problem. Is that OK? Yeah. All right, so let's go and do the graph there. So we know that since our a squared is under, since our a squared is under our y, we know it's going to be a vertical one. So let's just double check to make sure we have this. So the first thing I'm going to do is write in the center. The center is at 1 comma 4 over 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Then, now, if we know what the center is, now we need to determine what the vertices are. Now, we know the vertices have to be vertical, right? So from my center, which is at 1, 4, I need to now go up and down, right? Because that's all going to be on your major axis. So to find my vertices, uh, vertices is going to be square root of 24. So I need to figure out what the square root of 24 is, which is roughly going to be 4 and some change, almost a 5, right? Square root of 24, yes? So what you can say is for the vertices, your vertice is going to be 1 comma 4 plus the square root of 24. And it's going to be 1 comma 4 minus the square root of 24. You understand your center, right? Your vertices is your distance A from up. Here's your ellipse, right? Here's your center. Here's your vertice. Here's your vertice. The distance from here to here is A. The distance from here to here is A, correct? So what is A? A, in our case, is the square root of 24, right? So if I give you the center, to find v, or find your vertice, you just need to add the square root of 24, right, to which coordinate of your, of your center, though, the x or the y. Since you're going up, you're going to want to add it to the, the y coordinate, which is k. So that's why I have your vertice is going to be 1 comma 4 plus square root of 24 and minus the square root of 24. And the square root of 24 is 4 point, so it's going to be 4.8. Okay. So 4 point, so uh, 4 plus 4.8 will be like 8.8. .8. So we could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So it's going to be almost up to 9. And then this one down um, 4 minus 4.8 is going to be like a negative 0.8. So it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, down to there. Then I need to go and determine my, my focus. So now my focus is a distance of C. And so since we're adding in plus or minus C, I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's going to be my focus. And down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Because remember, your, your, your center, your vertices, and your foci all lie on the major axis of symmetry. Notice the distance from the center to my vertice, ladies and gentlemen, this distance is the square root of 24. This distance, the distance from my center to my foci, was 4. All right? Now, to finish off the graphing, I knew, do need to figure out what my b is, which is the square root of 8. And the square root of 8 is 2.824271, roughly first five digits. So to go from the, the middle, if I have here is at 1, I need to add 1 plus 2.8, which would be 3.8. So 1, 2, 3. So it's almost up to 4, which would be out there. And then minus. Uh, so 1 minus 2.8, which would be 1.8. 1, one negative 1 1.8, which would be right around there. And there's what your parabola looks like. Okay? So the main important thing that you guys need to do, so it's a little bit difficult because you're approximating values. The main important thing you guys need to know though, how is how to take it in that in your standard form to write it into your vertex form. Make sure it equals one. Then you at least know what the center is and you can find your A and B. Once you guys know the center, your A and B, you can find the value for your foci, and then you know your major axis and your minor axis. Okay? That's it. Um, 